So this is the demo I was talking about last time. So last, um, so last Tuesday we looked at uh, oscillations, and you looked at simple harmonic oscillation with a spring, with uh, mass on this spring, right? That's the demo that we have used for a while. So we, um, oops, we introduced the oscillation with that because that's what you're familiar with. Um, it's easier. Um, but I want to use this to set up to uh, illustrate one thing and actually talk about one more thing in a little more detail. So this is an example of pendulum. You have actually seen pendulum before, right? And you see that this moves back and forth like in a, you know, like TikTok kind of uh, regular way. The same way this mass was oscillating on the spring on a, in a regular way. So you can imagine applying the mathematical description that we were applying to mass on a spring the exact same way to here. So this is, uh, um, this is another example of simple harmonic oscillator. It, uh, uh, if we had to give it a name, it would be pendulum. And we'll go through the derivation of this pendulum equation of motion so that we can see that the solution to this looks exactly like what we looked at on Tuesday. Um, what this setup is for right now is to illustrate what we, what I, uh, what's called the coupled, um, coupled oscillators. So that's uh, this demo that you saw before, um, right? Um, where it started out oscillating up and down, and then over time it's rotating that way. Um, I prefer this demo because this is one, easier to explain, and two, easier to manipulate. So let me demonstrate uh, one of the features of this coupled oscillator with uh, this demo. Ah, all right, it's not there. Okay, um, so this is how I'm gonna set off this oscillation. I'm going to set it off so that only, uh, let me give them a name. Alice and Bob, A and B. Um, so I'm going to uh, start this motion with only Alice moving. So I'm gonna pull Alice back and let go. And as you watch this over a period of time, I want you to notice what happens. So Bob starts to move and you will see that over time, Alice actually comes to a stop. There's a moment when she comes to a complete stop. Well, when it comes to its a mess. I know it's uh, right here. Alice is at a complete stop. But it doesn't stay there. It actually gets moving again. And then over time, Bob will come to a complete stop. Wow. Well, I'll wait until Bob comes to a stop and then I'll continue. It, this does take a while because. Um, so this is, uh, wait, it hasn't come to a stop yet. Uh, I mean, you believe it, it'll come to a stop, right? Okay. Um, so this is an example of coupled oscillator. And I will tell you right now that um, coupled oscillator is a topic, it's an upper division level topic. So other than doing this demo and giving you some terms to, I don't know, Google search, I want, we won't really talk about it. But um, it's an upper division level topic to actually deal with it in um, detail. But we can handle it in a conceptual level. In a conceptual level, um, this is one way I can describe it. So I start by putting energy into A. And as A moves back and forth, what you are saying is that some of this energy transfers over to B. And then you wait long enough, that energy transfers back to A, back to B, back to A, and so on. If there was no friction, this would go on indefinitely. And, um, so what do you think is the mechanism of energy transfer? Tickle? Uh, yeah, so when I put energy into A, how is that energy that I'm putting into A getting t transferred into energy of B? Yeah. Yeah, as you watch this, you realize that, notice that this support is um, moving back and forth, right? Yeah, you might have thought that's because I don't have proper budget to put a good support. Um, but actually, the fact that the support moves, it's an important part of how this works. I haven't actually tried this, but let me try this. Let me actively stabilize it just by holding on to it. Can I do it? Uh, I don't think I can actually do it. So there's a reason this is a two kilogram mass. It's heavy enough so that it can actually shake the support. Now, let me show you a little bit of change um, from this. So. 
So they look the same, same length or symmetric. I'm going to just change the setup here slightly by uh, wrapping the string around this mess. I'm going to, oops, uh, by wrapping the string around this mess. And I'm trying to avoid it having like uh, unwrapping and just uh, tumbling down. Um, No, it's a pretty heavy mess, and this paper clip is really flimsy. All right, I think that'll work. All right. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let let's try it again. I'm going to put energy into A. Let's see if it, that transfers over to B. So some of it does, right? But not quite. In fact, we can wait for 10 minutes, and not enough energy will really go into B. And since it's not going into B, it stays in A. So what do you think was the biggest difference between the setup we had before and the setup now? So this support, it's still shaking as this moves back and forth. So why is that energy not being transferred into this? Wait, what? Um, so the length is different, but uh, it has really nothing to do with the radius, nothing to do with the torque. Yeah. Asia, you're going to say something? Yeah, so the difference in height is different. But, but you know, the height is different, but I want to um, express it in a way that it's not specific to this pendulum setup. Because the, the description that we are trying to give, it's something general that applies to all simple harmonic oscillators. Whether it's based on pendulum motion, whether it's based on spring motion, Oops, uh, whether it's based on spring motion, this feature that we are going to describe will apply to all simple harmonic oscillators. So, um, so let, me, uh, let me show you. It's kind of hard to guess at this without having seen it. So you see how fast this is moving back and forth, right? Now watch. I'm going make, to make, make this move by putting energy into B instead. Do you see a difference? What's different? Ali? Yeah, so it's not transferring. We know that already. But what is the difference in how A is moving and how B is moving? Yeah, this is faster. So this is one of the features of the simple harmonic oscillator that uh, we looked at last time, and we didn't really spend enough time on it. That's why I wanted to highlight it. So when you look at simple harmonic oscillator motion, there's really the, if you had to pick out the one thing that characterizes, this, characterizes a simple harmonic oscillator motion, is that it has a natural frequency of oscillation. A simple harmonic oscillator, uh, oscillator motion has a natural frequency of oscillation. And you saw this with the mass on a spring system, uh, right? We derived, so you know, um, if when you describe the motion of the mass this way with this function, the height of the mass as a function of time is equal to some amplitude times cosine of omega t plus the phase factor. What you saw last time was that uh, a lot of these parameters were variables or undetermined, except one. The angular frequency here was determined by the equation of motion. So for mass on spring, you saw that this omega was equal to square root of k over m, right? And this becomes, a, this is the property of the system. It's a constant value. So if you had some mass that's hanging from a spring, then it naturally will oscillate at this particular frequency. 
and no amount of what I do, like if I try to make it oscillate, oops, <laughs> um, too much. Uh, if I try to make it oscillate at a greater amplitude, that will not make it move at any faster uh, frequency. I mean, it'll move at a faster speed, but the frequency will be the same. That's what you saw in the lab, right? So that feature transfers over to any other system that you would describe as a simple harmonic oscillator. So that's what you are seeing here. These two different pendulums, they have different parameters, different length. And that length somehow must go into the equation that determines its uh, natural frequency of oscillation. And we'll take you know, 20 minutes or so to look at that. So, uh, so that's what you are seeing here. These two have different natural frequency of oscillation. So when, so you know, in terms of trying to transfer energy from A to B, as this moves, it shakes the support at a particular frequency. And the frequency that this is shaking the support at, it's mismatched with the frequency that this needs to gain a lot of, because you know, you can actually imagine uh, making this move with a very tiny amount of force. I think, can I do it with my breath? I might be able to. So yeah, I'm out of breath. Uh, if you do the correct frequency, you can do it with a very small amount of force. This is tied to something called the resonance that we won't spend a lot of time, but that's the important part in how energy transfers from this to this. So you know the shaking of the support, it's very small. It's a, it doesn't cause anything to shake at a great amplitude, but when these two have the same length, so from the equations that we are going to go through in a little bit, these two happen to be oscillating at the same frequency. So that when I get one to move first, then this shakes the support, and it's shaking at just the right frequency that with each cycle, it's putting more energy, more and more energy into B. And I guess as it's doing that, I guess, so it's losing energy, so it slows down, comes to an eventual stop, and then you know, at that moment, this is a shake. Uh, so uh, wait a little bit. So at, at this moment, B is shaking the support. And the shaking of the support puts some of the energy back into the A. Yeah. So uh, let me just dis uh, finish this discussion with a couple of oscillators. Um, so in upper division, they describe this in terms of normal mode. And one way you can actually describe it is uh, this is system as a whole, has two different ways it can shake. That, uh, um, that's the normal mode. It, uh, um, so let me write down because um, it, for coupled oscillators, uh, normal mode is the mode in which there's one single frequency of oscillation and it's a sort of a, uh, not fixed. It, it, we call it stationary state sometimes. If you watch it, you will see it. So it has two normal modes. It's uh, one normal mode is this one, where these two shake at the same, like in sync. Then it's, um, you will see, if you watch it for a while, you'll see, oh, oh. oops. <laughs> um, I did not think that through. <laughs> um, um, so this is the system fixed up. It's just shorter than it was before. I think it still works. Um, so let me just demonstrate that it still works. If you start the motion, then it does do that. Um, now, what I want to, to, you know, I'll wait until this stops so that you can see that it comes to a complete stop. And then as this continues to move, this now moves back and forth again. Good, so you're convinced that it still works. So this is the normal mode that I was trying to describe, but I could only gesture before. So this is the one normal mode that moves at a particular frequency. <laughs> um, 
And you see, look at the motion of the support, how the support moves along with the, both masses moving together. And this is the other normal mode. This has two normal modes, what you just saw was one, and this is the other normal mode. And look at how the support actually doesn't move as much because it's getting pulled and pushed the, the other way. So as a result of that, these two normal modes, these two stationary states, they have different frequency of oscillation. So uh, what you are seeing here as this motion, you can describe it as um, sort of combination of the to those two normal modes happening at the same time, somehow. And so, so when they were, when these two normal modes, this and this, when they're completely, you know, when I sort of synchronize, imagine one starting this way and the other one this way. At time equals zero, it will look like this motion. And as this shakes back and forth, um, I guess normal mode that's going this way, it has a faster frequency, so that sort of uh, goes, starts going faster. Then at some point, um, it'll come to a combination that looks like this plus this. So that's when this is at rest and this is moving. And um, so yeah, all of this will make a little more sense once we've done the something called the wave interference in the context of waves.